I'm just checking uh, streaming as well. Um, okay. Sound is okay? Okay. As uh, some of you uh, may be aware, I'm quite keen to look at the evolution of chess style. Uh, so this is a major uh, series on my YouTube channel for how style evolved. And I've been looking at, uh, most recently, Alexander Alekhine, um and his rematch against uh, Bogolodzhibov. Bogolodzhibov? Uh, which many people uh, thought wasn't really worth it. Uh, Capablanca, for example, really uh, wanted a rematch, uh, and, and other people may have been, you know, playing stronger, or you know, Nimzovic couldn't uh, pay the uh, required amount apparently to get to get a match against Alakine. So there were some um, other player candidates uh, for this match, and um, I thought I'd use tonight's show to. Uh, look at uh, so, uh, some decisive games in the final game which I haven't covered yet on the YouTube channel and which will form part of the Evolution of Style series. So in game 21 uh, this this is quite a fascinating uh, game in some respects and it's covered actually by Sparoff in the Great Predecessors uh, series so let's have a look at it um, you might not be impressed greatly by Alexander Alekhine's play in this particular game, uh, even though he won. So, uh, okay, so d4 was played by Bodzilozhbov, and um, okay, we had uh, d5 from Alexander Alekhine. Uh, we'll flip the board actually, we'll flip the board. So, um, now uh, the solid move knight f3. And uh, here, Alexander chose e6. Okay, and off the c4, a very curious uh, looking move by today's standards. Although this move has sprung up in, in variations of the Slav. a6. I know it's a bit trendy in some variations of the Slav to play this a6 move. Uh, so, one sneaky intention might be to kind of grab the pawn and then play b5, and then the bishop can go here or across this diagonal. And this, this idea of snatching a pawn actually worked quite well in an earlier game in the match. Um, okay, here uh, actually Fm played uh, c5, Fm Bozilozhibov, I'll call him Fm maybe sometimes for short, c5, right, and this has immediately attacked this c5 pawn with b6. Uh, and now white simply uh, plays uh, c takes b6 and if, if Alexander plays cb6 I think he's, he's getting um, a slightly worse position so what he tries is is quite an energetic um, looking move hitting uh, the d4 pawn he plays c5 and this this might be okay it looks a bit like um, some sort of Benko Gambit at the moment, potentially. Uh, Benko Gambit declined, uh, potentially, with, with White play, has played b6. White's won a pawn and played b6, it's kind of. Um, well, not really. Okay, it's it's a gambit anyway. So knight c3 was played, and now we see knight d7. So as though he's going to regain the pawn. And now an artificial looking move is played which, as it happens, works out remarkably well, perhaps shouldn't have. Um, Fm played knight a4 here. By the way, sorry, I should have said the location of, of this World Championship match, was at, it was actually held in Germany in 1934, this World Championship match. Um, I don't know if you, you guys know that already, sorry. <laughs> should have said the location. Um, uh, so, um, Okay, so here in this position, 
I think um, Alexander he kind of he he played uh, a very committal move actually uh, he plays c4 and I think Sparf has indicated in the notes in, in great predecessors that uh, black could have got um, a reasonable position just taking on d4 here uh, so maybe taking on d4 seems seems to be better c4 is a bit of a target actually to white playing a move like b3 later it's a, it's an obvious target uh, later uh, for b3 and stuff okay now white is actually going to try and also punish black if black plays knight takes b6 so what he does is play bishop d2 uh, so you know takes there'll be bishop a5 uh, sneaky. Uh, that might not be the end of the story, so I'm not not checking it. But uh, bishop d6 at least means now that uh, you know takes. There might be bishop c7 as well now to unpin. Uh, but White doesn't care about that at the moment. He just plays b3, just targeting the c4 pawn. Okay, and now we see bishop b7, e3. And really, this this is a real liability. This, this pawn. Uh, it's it's looking quite unpleasant. Uh, White's pressure already uh, from the opening. So this isn't Alexander's best opening position for sure. And in fact, things get a whole load worse now because uh, Black takes on B3, give, giving. Um, Bozlozhbov a clear pawn up really not only is a clear pawn up the c5 square might be made use of uh, later on that c file okay so a clear pawn up after 11 moves okay 97 bishop d3 both sides castle and um, yeah Alexander's carrying on as if nothing has happened uh, basically uh, that he isn't a clear pawn down he's just carrying on Knight c6, uh, now we see rook fc1, but white has got comfortable c file pressure and you know c5. Okay, so it's a bit of a strange game this one. We see now e5, okay, which doesn't uh, pro probably doesn't leave this one a pre because there's nasty uh, attacks later, uh, potentially uh, possible. But mind you, it's attacking d6, um, so there's other probably other sneaky reason here why queen uh, takes d5 is is not possible um i guess actually queen, queen takes d5 here there would probably be knight f6 so if the queen moves then we've got e4 so that's probably the sneaky reason why that wasn't on little trap but uh, after bishop f5 again white's advantage seems to be naturally um, increasing now after e4 uh, these pawns being fixed now uh, it's knight e1 okay knight f6 so this is like a bad kind of French defense in reverse where white really has got an uh, increasing a positional advantage so he's attacking that bishop on b7 okay which is now protected queen e7 now we see g3 okay uh, rook f b8 as though there is an interest in trying to get this pawn back a4 as if there's an interest in making sure black doesn't get the pawn back a5 which weakens b5 okay and the queen parks there and this is just really uncomfortable for black this position uh, now knight d8 uh, does unveil a sneaky idea um, especially after knight takes b7 knight takes b7 uh, there's potentially potentially an idea of the knight one day coming to c4 because this bishop's over here it's not really relevant for c4 so watch out now rook ab1 h5 knight g2 g6 kicking the bishop and now this looks weird again this looks really weird to play g5 as though he's like weakening squares uh, and not caring about it. Bishop f5, queen d8. Now rook infiltration. But now we see after bishop e7, at least, at least black has knight d6 to c4 now. 
in which she could be putting pressure on that b6 pawn and getting a tempo so this was something to sort of be banked on here so it's a miserable position and um, I don't know in some of these games uh, people have uh, I don't know commented incorrectly that um, Alexander might have been potting or something the night before drinking too much because some of these games are, are kind of below his usual strength um, but maybe you know this one was just an, an opening blunder uh, seeing an acceleration of, of an advantage for white white plays h4 which doesn't look like um, a kind of such such an ingenious move it's fixing these pawns more uh, g takes h4 gives black now a nice late h pawn okay so now knight d6 though with this idea of knight c4 and to to Burgo's credit um, he almost sets up an invincible position just to sort of let black escape he sets this brilliant position up now avoiding knight c4 by sacrificing the exchange which seems to be very well justified here he, he sacrifices the exchange with rook takes d6 because after queen takes d6 he can now play b7 very dangerous pawn and now he can support the pawn with bishop c8 so in this position um, black seems to have uh, very little to do here and is actually faced with losing the a5 pawn uh, next so he protects that and after knight f5 the queen has to move so it goes to a6 okay uh, but in this position, uh, you know, white has a, a lot of uh, trump cards now. And actually, black can't really do anything uh, with these rooks. And when I engine checked this earlier, a, a quiet plan of just bishop c1 improving this piece to a3 would be very dangerous indeed, maybe to e7 or knight e7, be very, very dangerous for black. Uh, but it seems uh, Bogo really starts um, messing things up now. Uh, he lets Alexander escape from his position. I mean, he, he doesn't even need to fear the Queen Exchange uh, because, again, the Black Rooks would just be tied up uh, with nothing to do. So th this looks like um, uh, not un uh, an unnecessary uh, risk. Queen c5 and it allows Alexander to uh, just counter sack the exchange I believe this was a completely unnecessary risk to take uh, so but anyway so a counter sack of the exchange is played and um, you know maybe white can simply take on b7 but um, he he. This is um, a complete blunder. Actually, I think most people regard this move thirty four as a terrible um, blunder. I wonder if I give you uh, twenty seconds, can you guess what White played here? Which is a blunder. Can you guess the blunder? <laughs> so why why is it a blunder? Um, so what move was played uh, without looking at the score sheet, and why was it a blunder? So 20 seconds starting from now. <clears throat> Anyone? Guess why it's blunder? Difficult to tell. Okay, okay. Um, I know it's pretty hot weather and everything. Okay, so I'll just. Uh, okay, no, it wasn't Rook takes B7. Um, someone on stream mentioned. No, it's not Rook takes B7. Now, p possibly Bishop takes B7 is a good move, right? 
but what black sorry what white played I think he was thinking of an advanced pawn or something um, he played rook b5 which simply uh, sorry yeah could you hide the game score sorry sorry Is, can you go on to the opening book tab to hide the game score because I like to ask these um, yeah okay if if you hide the game score on the play chess server that'd be cool so rook, rook b5 just allows rook takes b5 and all, all of a sudden uh, black is doing um, very well here because uh, because if, if white um, takes here then queen takes c8 snatches a piece so actually this is just a horrific blunder uh, he had a great position here Bogo great position so if he had just um, taken that'd be fine you know it would be very difficult for black maybe bishop takes as possible etc uh, but even earlier he didn't need to even play queen c5 so he's compounded the earlier slight blunder with a huge blunder this rook b5 and he goes down the exchange so rook takes b5 bishop takes a6 rook takes c5 uh, so white has just lost the exchange and even so uh, there's some amusements uh, to follow so knight d7 c6 knight e5 knight d4 white still had some pressure and um okay bishop b6 bishop b7 knight f3 might not be uh the best move took took bishop c7 bishop a6 rook c1 bishop d4 giving away basically I mean this this gave away the c pawn for a start I mean so he's actually making a total um, me mess of it and um, okay so bl black is the exchange up and there was an opportunity here to take uh, this a pawn to make it difficult for black rather than allow black two outside pass pawns this was the chance to eliminate the a pawn and that wasn't taken either uh, so Alexander is managing now to to use his two pass pawns so if, if takes h2 and um, g4 rook h7 bishop h2 and a, a neat tactic now to unblock a bishop d6 uh, and now it's plain sailing for black uh, with that a3 pawn okay so now it's just it's all over so th this was a very strange game because Alexander Alokhan he was gone in the position the position was just gone and he managed to kind of recover from it from blunders from Bogo um, so possibly both of them were drinking the night before too much I think they were friends or something and I don't know but it looks just a weird game uh, White had you know a really quite crushing uh, bind on the position which was kind of wasted uh, could have been an infinite kind of bind this was a great move rook d6 in, in many respects and he could have just improved uh, this piece and not only he didn't improve that piece he allowed the counter exchange and compounded it further with losing the exchange um, and then also made it easy for Alexander in the end game uh, by not eliminating the a5 pawn so that didn't help either when he had the chance to eliminate uh, the a5 pawn 
So instead, Alexander has two outside pass pawns. The end here is a neat tactic, bishop d6 though, to sort of unblock the pawn. You know, if e5, you just play uh, bishop takes e5. And that, that was winning there. So that was a curious game. Um, okay. Let's go on to another game. Uh, which was a decisive game in this in this World Championship match. If I can load it in. So in game 23, uh, it seems um, the match wasn't yet over as this game shows. Game 23. So Fm was um, playing white. Okay. Uh, well, actually, we'll, we'll take Alexander's perspective. So Alexander playing black. Um, so d4, d5. Okay, knight f3, knight f6. And um, we get a queen's gambit accepted. c4, d takes c4. I think that fan that is too loud. It's a bit. It's very very hot here at the moment. I mean, it's like the hottest day of the year. Uh, so queen's game accepted. Check. Uh, queen takes c4. And it looks like some sort of um, modern Greenfield uh, variation. Bishop f5, knight c3. Uh, White is sometimes able to get a good center out of this sort of thing. G3, Bishop G2. Um, Bishop C2 looks like an odd move, uh, and it was played. Bishop C2, I guess it stops the Queen coming back to A4. Uh, it might have wanted to go back to A4. E3, um, but it is you know a tactical target as well. Um, not really sure I'm convinced with bishop c2 so bishop e7 both sides castle okay a3 a5 the queen attacks the bishop bishop goes to g6 and now this nice center uh, so this looks like a, a typical Grunfeld's um, Russian system position where sometimes white gets this nice center and black is striking at that center with queen b6 and now queen a6 offering exchange of queens and now c5 typical Grunfeld move eventually played striking at d4 but um, e5 the knight goes to d5 which is taken 